Well, now that the computer disassembled and I have thought for a little while, I have decided we're going to start with the power supply. The Cooler Master V850. Take a look at this. What the heck is this? Like, That's a rip right through the box. I hope nothing inside is damaged. I don't know what happened. Maybe it was from shipping or from handling in the warehouse. It's a similar thing on the other side of the box. It's all ripped up here and this is not my doing. It came like this. I noticed this before as well, but I'm just now pointing it out. I don't know what happened. I'm really hoping nothing inside is damaged. Uh, yeah, it's looking like nothing inside is damaged because there's two layers of cardboard and only the first layer is ripped. So that is good. We'll find out when I open it. Well, I was in the process of opening the power supply and I only got the uh, plastic thing off, that's all. And I noticed something else. So here is the side with the gash, the one that just like ripped it open, as you can see there. And on the other side had the ripped plastic and apparently there's a line here too. Look at that. It's not a gash this time, it's not actually ripped it, but what on earth happened to this box? Like, really? Was it doing shipping? Was it sitting in the warehouse and somebody just like slid it against or between two objects of similar height and they just ripped the cardboard or what? I don't have a clue what happened, but this is like crazy. Luckily, I don't think anything inside is broken, but like I said, we'll find out when I actually finish opening this thing. All right, I have opened the power supply box and in the box there was an instruction manual and that was it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, there was also a bag, which was is currently empty, but it contained all these cables right over here because it's a modular power supply, and so you can plug in whatever cables you need and leave the others out of your case, which is really handy for me because the Corsair 650D case has very little cable manage management room. And then finally, what else was in the box was the power supply, which is sitting in that bag right there, and I haven't even opened it myself yet. So this is going to be a reveal for myself as well as you guys. So, let's see what it looks like. That actually looks pretty good, in my opinion. I do like the uh, kind of aluminum thing going on here. In fact, this might even be aluminum. It's cold to the touch. I think that is aluminum. Is it brushed? It is brushed aluminum. Wow. I do like the look of that, though. The screw holes even make it better. Or whatever those things are. Pop rivets, maybe. How about the other side? other side gives a, a little bit of info I can't show you, but then there's also all the chart, or the one chart about the wattages and amps and volts and all that. Cooler Master V850. Oh yeah. And there's all the modular interface stuff. So now that we've seen the power supply and opened up everything else that came with it, let's go ahead and install it in the computer.
Okay, power supply is installed. You can see it right there. Uh, for now, I'm not sure what cables I'll need. As you can see, I have left most of the cables here. I haven't actually plugged them in. I have plugged in the CPU power cable and then this and this. I don't know if you can see these individual cables, but those two go to the motherboard for the 24 pin because I know I'm going to need the CPU and the motherboard plick cables. I don't know what other ones I'm going to need. Um, I'm probably going to need at least one of these Molex cables. I have two of them here and they each have two plugs, I believe. Yeah, they each have two plugs. I think I'm going to need like gonna need at least one of those cables and then maybe all three of these SATA cables they each have three connectors on them for three hard drives and I have six hard drives three in each bay here because I have a ton of hard drives and I also have a DVD drive that uses SATA for data and power so um, I may need all three of these SATA cables, however I may not because I'm trying to reduce the number of hard drives I have as well. And I also have a Molex to SATA adapter that gives me two more uh, SATA cables using a Molex cable. So I may not need all three, but anyways, that's just me rambling. Um, power supplies in, and I don't know what I'm going to do next, but I'm going to do something else. And I'll plug in these cables sometime later. Not now, though, because I don't know what exactly I need. Alright, guys, we're going to do hard drives next, because I think those are going to be really easy. All i got to do is slide them into those bays right over there. Does this camera zoom in really slowly? Sure does. So anyways, um, I've been on my laptop for a little while. My laptop's right there. And I have been trying to figure out which drives exactly I want to use, because all the ones that are in trays, like this one, this, uh, this one... This hard drive is in a tray. All the hard drives that were in trays, so one, two, three, and four, five, six, were hard drives that were in that computer before. And I'm going to be using these three out of those six drives again. Uh, those three drives are not going to be used, at least for now. I might end up using them later. I don't know. Because the. Uh, well, I guess only one of these actually still works properly. Uh, this is the one that works properly. It's a two terabyte. That's a one terabyte. It it doesn't work properly. It doesn't it doesn't transfer all the data properly. I don't really know how to explain it. And that's an SSD. It's an OCG Agil OCZ not OCG OCZ Agility Three, 120 gigabyte. And that drive just had so many problems. They all did. All of the Agility 3s did, and I just don't want to use that one ever again. So, um, I know I'm going to be using these four hard drives, and then I also bought two more. So, what we have here is an SSD that I'm going to put Windows on. It's a Samsung 840 Pro, uh, 512 gigabytes, which is the biggest it comes in, and this is one of the fastest SSDs. I'm not going to say the fastest, because it depends on which benchmark you do and who you ask, but it's one of the fastest, and it is far better than the 840 Pro that everybody seems to like, because it's cheap. Uh, the 8, or not the Pro. <laughs> it's much better than the 840 Evo. The Pro is better than the Evo. And everybody seems to like the Evo, but the Evo just has a ton of hype around it. It's really a terrible drive, because it has TLC NAND, which is really slow when the drive gets bogged down, and it'll shorten your lifetime for the drive. So I refused to buy the Evo, so I got a Pro, and I got 512 gigabytes, like I said, which is the biggest it comes in. Would have liked a 750 or a terabyte, but oh well. Then we also have over here a, a uh, another hard drive. So this will be the sixth drive in my computer, because we have... I probably shouldn't shake a hard drive, should I? Since we have those four over there that were already, well, three of which were already in my computer, one of which I am putting in my computer because I just had it laying around. It's actually the Hackintosh drive that I had in that computer, I don't know, maybe a year ago before the Hackintosh broke on me, and I just never bothered to fix it. So you have those four drives, and then number five is here, and number six. So it looks like I'm going to have six hard drives once again, and this is a Seagate 3 terabyte, and it's a Barracuda, so... These are all 7200 RPM drives, except the SSD, obviously. So uh, they're as fast as can be. But I bought the 3TB drive for uh, 
recording videos too, because it's like, to put it in perspective, a 30 minute video of raw footage, not edited or anything, not rendered, is about 70 gigabytes, more or less, depending on the game, depending on how much action happened in that video. So it takes a lot of space to record videos and save them up for montages especially. So I bought a 3 terabyte drive, hopefully that will be enough. I'm going to use it to replace um, the two 2 terabyte drives that I was recording to before, which are over here. Uh, that was one of the 2 terabytes, and the other one was that 2 terabyte. One Seagate, one Western Digital. Western Digital. I can talk. So, um, for those of you who are interested, the reasoning behind each of the drives, I'm going to quickly explain it, hopefully. So, um, you know, let's start with the SSD. Once I'm done explaining this, I'll even open the SSD, but I'm not going to do that yet, because this is, like, awesome, and I want to save it till the end of this hard drive segment. So the SSD, the purpose of it is to hold Windows, all my programs, and maybe some files. I'm not sure yet. It seems like a waste to put files on an SSD, <laughs> to be perfectly honest, because files don't need high read and write times. Only programs and Windows do. Then I have a 3 terabyte that I just bought, and that is for recording videos too, like I already mentioned. Next, we have a Western Digital 1 terabyte, and this is going to be to store my files. Um, like I said, it really seems like a waste to put files on an SSD, so why waste the space? Let's just put them on a hard drive. Uh, that is actually the same hard drive I was using to store some programs, actually most of my programs, and all my files um, in the previous computer that I just disassembled. So I'm going to be using that drive again. Then we have a 640 gigabyte as a, an SSD hard drive, and that's going to be for the Hackintosh, so it'll hold OS X and all my files in OS X. Then we have a 2 terabyte, which was a recording drive, and now I'm going to use it as a drive to store all my uploaded videos. Um, before I was just doing that on the 1 terabyte here, as well as the 1 terabyte right there, which is actually dying on me. And I have about a terabyte and a half of uploaded videos right now, so I figured I'd just put them all together on a 2 terabyte rather than splitting them up across multiple drives. Then I also have another 640 gigabyte, S not SSD, wow, I almost said SSD again. Hard drive, 640 gigabyte hard drive, and that is going to be for any files I need to save from old computers. Like right now, I think it has 550 or so gigabytes of data on it. And that's all just files that I've saved from previous computers because I need those files every once in a while. And I'm going to do the same, uh, getting files off this one terabyte before I start using it for files on the new computer. I'm going to take the files I need off of it and put them on the 640. So the 640 is basically my backup drive. Um, I think that explains all the drives. I went through all six of them. So now let's go and open the SSD because this is going to be awesome. Do I have to cut anything? If I do, I need to take the camera and turn it off. I do have to cut. Dang it. Okay, I'll be right back. Alright, let's open this awesome SSD. This is going to be an awesome one. Hopefully. Hopefully it looks awesome. Judging by the box, it's not going to look that awesome. But hopefully it does, because this is a very awesome SSD. Oh, and it's just... Okay, well, here it is. <laughs> I expected it to be wrapped in something, but I guess it's not, so... Ooh. Oh! Stickers! And instruction manual and a disc with something on it. What is on it? <laughs> manual and software, so you have... If you want to see the manual for how to use the SSD, you got to put this in a computer. That's interesting. I would have felt like a paper manual being a little more helpful, especially for people who don't have secondary computers. But okay. <laughs> what kind of stickers did we get? Samsung SSD activated, and we got two of those stickers. I don't think I'm going to use stickers. I don't ever use stickers, but they're there in case I should desire them. Desire to use them. Oh, installation guide. Okay, here we go. At least we have some instruction manual that's not on a disk. And then finally, we have the SSD itself. Let's take it out of this. 
Oh. This might be a metal casing. It feels rather cold, and it doesn't feel like a plastic cold. At least the edge here doesn't. The edge all around the drive does not feel like a plastic cold. It feels like a metal cold. So, uh, yeah. This is the SSD. There's, it doesn't really look that amazing. I think the OCD, OCZ Agility 3 looks better. But this is one heck of a good SSD, so I don't particularly care that it looks bad. It's still going to be awesome. So now let's go ahead and just install all the drives into my computer, which is over there. And there we go. All six hard drives are installed. Obviously, you didn't see me do the cabling, and that is because I still haven't done the cabling. There's nothing at the end of the hard drives. They are not plugged in yet. I'm going to do all the cabling, I think, at the end when I do cable management as well. Getting all the cables in behind the motherboard tray, because the 650D, like I've already said, has very little space behind the motherboard tray for cables, which really sucks. One of the flaws of this case, just it happened over time, I guess, is, and it's another reason I want to get rid of this case at some point, is that you can see this top hard drive is slightly slanted. This side is lower than this side. Can you see that? The reason for that, I don't know. It's like this part of the cage, the hard drive cage, is wider than the bottom part. I don't know why. But up here, whatever hard drive I put in here always ends up slanted because it doesn't it doesn't stay in its thing. Like there, I just made it even more slanted because it's just so loose. I just touched it and it fell down. So um, I'm gonna keep it down so that it doesn't ever fall. You never want a hard drive to fall. So I did I did actually intentionally push it down when I installed it so it wouldn't end up falling when I move the case back to where it goes. But. Uh, that was all. I just wanted to mention that the hard drives are installed, all six of them, and the SSD is way down there at the bottom. You can barely see it, so the fact that it doesn't have any special looks 
doesn't really matter. Where did I put my, S my old SSD? Oh, I put it on my bed. Just for comparison for you guys, this is what the OCZ Agility 3 SSD looks like. I think it looks better than the 840 Pro, but the 840 Pro is just by far a better SSD. That is for sure. <laughs> I haven't even used it and I already know it. To be perfectly fair, I did know that the Agility 3 was not going to be the best of SSDs when I bought it, but I figured it's a product on the market. How bad could it possibly be, right? The answer is pretty bad. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, I don't know what I'm going to do next, but uh, that is it for the hard drives.